My name's Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. We're going to be looking at some facsimile copies of classic Jim Steranko artwork. Jimmy, but first, what do you have for us? I have patreon.com slash Jim Rugg, and I am showing off some of my zines here right now. These are collections of drawings, comics, uh, basically out of print stuff. I do a lot of zine making and what would be small press, custom books, printed matter. They go, they're gone fast. Some yeah. of these things are print runs of 40 or less. I post a lot of them on my Patreon, so if you're interested in the zine making, the print making, the, the small press and books, patreon.com slash jimrug, where right now you can download this selection. I'm also doing things like a lot of original art sharing, and uh, also going through a couple of comics that are the same story, Street Angel's Dog and Lost Dog, from the Image Street Angel series, comparing them page by page because it's the same story, but uh, I did it three years apart. So that's the kind of stuff you can find on my Patreon, patreon.com slash jimrug. Red Room Issue 1 and 2, as of this recording, are available for, for pre-order right now. Thousands have been reserved already, Jimmy. New horror comics for... Horror comics for the new millennium, Jim. And uh, each issue is going to be completely self-contained. Uh, complete stories in each. Comes out on a monthly basis. Five issues are done right now. Hopefully we keep that monthly schedule. But there's a lot of back-end work that's required. Also, patreon.com slash edpiscor. People have been sending me bootlegs, man. And I received two bootlegs uh, today, in fact. And uh, the comics are up there ahead of time for the early adopter. And they're up there at a high enough resolution that people were able to print up like really nice copies to read uh, on paper. But this is essentially issue one. Nice, thick, 64-pager introduce you to the world of Red Room, and uh, once you go into the Red Room, you don't go back. <laughs> Jimmy, can we take a look at some Steranko artwork, man? This is awesome, man. We love these artist editions, and this is from, you know, that, that Silver Age time period when art was produced two up. Yeah. So this is one of the big artist edition books uh, to start with. And Steranko, as far as I know, did the design and layout for this one, which is a little bit unusual. I don't, I don't know how many other artist editions were actually put together by the artist. Can't think of too um, many. Great designer, known for his graphic design sense. And you see it with this stuff. You see it on the cover. You see it with the end pages. Uh, it makes for a really nice book. Little shout out. Uh, you know, I received, we received no uh, kickback or anything like that, but I was looking for this book for a while. You go on eBay, it's $300. You go on Amazon, it might be $400. AtomicEmpire.com. It's just a store. Uh, they have, they're holding weight, and uh, 160 bucks, man, like cover price, essentially, for the second printing. So go there if you are if you watch this video and you dig what you're seeing. Uh, I can't imagine they have endless supply, <laughs> uh, but it was just cover price. And, you know, you never know, like, uh, sometimes you go to the IDW website and they might have um, the, the stuff at, at cover price when it's going for more expensive prices elsewhere. Atomic Empire is a good spot to check out uh, as well. Pretty strong, man. Like, like uh, really nice indicia pages here. Really dig uh, the two color approach that you're seeing on this page yeah, or on this spread. Real nice uh, wine colored red goes throughout the the beginning portions. And the focus, of course, is on his work with Nick Fury, uh, Agent of Shield. There are rumors of a, of a second volume of this coming, uh, of a second volume of a Jim Stranko artist edition, but that hasn't been released yet. So forthcoming maybe, but this is a focus on S.H.I.E.L.D. and the work that he did there. So early Marvel Jim Steranko. Yeah, for sure, man. This is this is like young, enthusiastic Jim Steranko. He's got to play with the Jack Kirby aesthetic, and he does some cool things with it, man. It's it's never uh, quite right. Uh, the foreshortening is always a little a little wonky, but I love it. And he's also bringing in EC influence and other kinds of uh, aesthetics. Yeah, he's one of that, just barely that second generation of Marvel artists. And I feel like they really, uh, he really stands out. Like from the very beginning, he's bringing some of his own flair. And this is a nice addition for that because we're going to see him become Jim Steranko in this volume. This is a cool thing, man. Layouts by Jack Kirby. So, you, you know, we recognize that hand. Yes. That's all Jack Kirby writing. And uh, when you see layouts in these old comics, you know, you got your Don Heck Iron Mans and, and stuff like that. What you're reading is a Jack Kirby story with a different varnish on top of it. Yeah, almost an illustrator, that uh, that finisher person. Yeah. This stuff reminds me a little bit of young Barry Smith. I was thinking of even Paul Glacey. Oh, a lot of Glacey there. Of course, Strank, a big influence on Glacey. But I think of Paul Smith, or I mean Barry Smith, 
in that they both are very Kirby influenced in the beginning and they yeah. become what they become. You know, these they're they're very unique stylistic masters. But it's cool to see them at a starting point that's kind of similar. This is great. Like the amount of detail in these giant pages is remarkable. Yeah, when you see like people playing with the Kirby aesthetic, the one thing that they never get is uh the way Kirby places blacks uh on the page. So this is a far different approach. There's a lot of these like little noodly black marks that you just don't see in your average uh Kirby comic. Yeah, no doubt about it. You mentioned the foreshortening being um you know, a difference that you see. There's a lot of like a wonky figure yeah. to some of the Stranko work. And based on what we know of Stranko and his work and, you know, becoming a very successful illustrator when he's not in comics, I think it's, he knows what he's doing. Right. You know, these figures that are strange, I think he's conscious of that. Dan Klaus has that quality. Mm -hmm. And I like that kind of like weird distortions in figures. Sometimes it captures movement and balance really well. There, there's a quality about that imperfection that speaks to me. This this might be around the same time when the corner boxes in the cover uh, on on the on the comics said pop art comics. So that could be the height of Lichtenstein and that kind of like pushing of yeah. the the aesthetic where, where it's almost made to look childish. We have some paste ups, man. Yeah, like, loving seeing that on the originals. Do you think that he just cuts this out of a magazine? I mean, this looks this is newsprint. This is aged newsprint. That's what it looks like to me. I, I don't know where else, you know, like, where are you going to get something like this, you right. know? I love it, too, because it's boom, and then... it's uh, This is almost like, in Ren and Stimpy, this, this would be like, <laughs> like the Bill Ray painting. Yes. And then, psh, let's go back to animation cells. That's really cool. And in this case, this is a, a tie? Is that what he's... Yeah, I guess so. But it looks like, uh, you know what it looks like? Storenko traveled into the... He used this machine, traveled into the future, right? And got one of those Toddle Bin Beset uh, Swamp Thing <laughs> comics, and cut a little bit of that uh, that embryo of Swamp Thing and put it there. What I love seeing there is this is very very early Stranko, and the guy's confident enough to be like, "I have this idea. Yeah, let me cut and paste some elements onto the page." So yeah. you see Stranko from the get go just trying things. Yeah, I love mm -hmm. seeing all that Kirby hand on there. And when you sit down and really read this stuff. Uh, then, then you really do see uh, sort of how little uh, Stanley has done. <laughs> yeah, you can see those those notes, like every piece of the margin is full of those Kirby handwritten notes. And sometimes it's verbatim with with the uh, what he writes and what the dialogue bubbles will will say. What a way to start if you're a young cartoonist working over Kirby and just getting this kind of like Marvel dynamic. You know, learning that part, like what a panel, man! That's that's your pop art panel. Totally, man. This would be this would be a great kind of uh, boot camp if you want to learn to brush ink. Like just just print this up on blue line and just go over the marks, man, with the same Raphael brush and try to get this line, try to get all these lines to kind of match up. Great action shot there. I love these big lettering. You know, the sound effect lettering is so strong in this era. And see, when you see these kind of pieces, man, you can't help but think of Wally Wood a little bit. Absolutely. Which makes sense. If you're a graphic guy and you're into illustration, of course you're looking at EC Comics. Oh, man, that's a cool big close-up shot of, of Fury's face. Taking a good flyer. <laughs> Got to get this page done. A little, little bit of whiteout, too, to just, like, make that jawline the way he wants it. Yeah, man. Great title lettering. So Look at that big hand. Yeah, what a, what a striking splash page. Upside down, Nick Fury's really cool. Like how they approach like the beard stubble kind of treatment. Even the knuckles, like the hairy knuckles. That's how everybody did it, man, before Scott Williams busted out the um, rapidograph. I would always look at these like close up of the iris and stuff and, and wonder like, oh, it's so perfect. But of course you're using a little template to get a perfect circle on it. For sure. That's, that size. Yeah, he's definitely using circle template there. Still on the Kirby layouts. So we'll, we'll keep mindful of that as we move forward because there will be a divorce between the aesthetic. We talk all the time when we look at these artist editions about what you're seeing. Yeah. In some cases, it's almost a black and white photocopy when it's squeaky clean. Here you get some screen tones, which have yellowed nicely with age. I don't know what this is, but it looks like there might be a paste up or something that's a different yellow than the rest of the paper. Yeah, it's a photostat. And then, uh, you know, the white media on top of it. So... These are this is what you this is what I look for at an artist edition. I want to see the the decades of time on these pages. That's awesome. <laughs> start seeing those hydras. <laughs> <laughs> 
interesting how well to me how well Nick Fury fits with Jim Stranko. And who knows, maybe if they'd have given him any book, you know, I bet he could have made Doctor Strange sing or or you know, he has the iconic stuff. I was thinking about his Hulk cover. That's yeah. like the iconic Hulk cover. He doesn't even have a Hulk run, but mm-hmm. he he's able to really distill these characters through his vision and boy does fury lend himself to it you know we got the motorcycle bandits man like this is this harkens back to his uh yes his go-go dancer um motorcycle follies yeah it makes me wonder now while we're sitting around and he's telling us this story yeah (laughs) he's just telling us nick fury stories (laughs) is this based on a true story (laughs) i don't know once again with the great lettering sound effects man Here's a question. I mean, they're indicating that there's a big sound effect, at least in the art. Like, he's yeah, working he's out, that. you know, part of this composition is this big, cool sound effect. Yeah. I, he, th- that's one of the, the, you know, no pun intended, the marvels of that, that whole system where you have to factor in the Stan Lee verbosity. But I do think that it's this weird back and forth where, like, if they drew bigger, there'd be less words, man. Yeah, it's I a just good feel point. like Stan Lee is just filling space, man, because it's all bloviating nonsense. Like, none of this is saying anything, really. I like thinking about it in terms of, like, word count with your EC Comics, because this is probably comparable to your average EC Comic page. Yeah. It's just that these words are applied after the pencils as opposed to the other way around. Right. And it does create a very dynamic page as a result. Yeah, that's for sure. How about that design, man? That's amazing. Lichtenstein should have lifted that one. Yeah, that's po- like you make a poster out of that image. Yeah, that's that's great. That sequence of him like changing his his physical appearance. <laughs> All this tech, like it's just going to get more ornate as we keep flipping pages. And that's your deviation from Kirby, right? Yeah, you, you, Kirby is known for Kirby tech. Stranko picks up that that baton and keeps going, and it becomes Stranko's version of that tech. Almost James Bond, uh, you know, before that or, or concurrent. Wow, this is dope. So so what we were looking at is uh, drew the image, yeah. photostatted it, took the stat, and then just chopped it up a little bit to create that wow. askew imagery. That's wild. I'd like to see that in print. Back three-quarter views, always a bitch, man. I'm, I'm glad <laughs> to see white out on these faces. <laughs> Always a bitch. What do you do with those ears? Draws a good dum dum dugan. Draws a good everything. That's I mean, like a good. Uh, that's a good quintessential kind of Marvel panel, man. But that's your baseline. You know, you've yeah. pointed that out in past videos where the characters are standing on the baseline, so your perspective is kind of right. Right. This is uh, reminds me of, of uh, Glacy. You mentioned sure. him a minute ago. Got the double lighting. Yeah, that feels very Glacy to me. Yeah, those big eyes, super expressive eyes. And look at this man. No more Jack Kirby in the layouts. Full Steranko, and that motherfucker is going for it. This is unbelievable. This is another one of those characters on the baseline, foreground characters, background characters. That's all super cool. And then like. That setting's amazing. That's your setting right out of EC Comics and Wally Wood. Unbelievable. See, the thing about the baseline is that everything is in perspective so long as people are standing on it, but this guy ain't in perspective. Yes, I was thinking of him. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, what this should be is just a shoe whoosh, coming across. If you see this guy, if we saw the rest of him, he has, like, tank treads at his waist. Yeah, I was just thinking that... Like you, a reaver. Like, you know how... Uh, Tom Cruise has to walk in gullies when he's standing next to his actresses. <laughs> like, this guy's just in a little gully. <laughs> but you see Steranko taking over plotting as well. Yes. Uh, you know, pretty bold for young cartoonists. That's something a lot of cartoonists didn't didn't at least get credit for. That's probably somebody coming from another art field that's like, hey, I'm doing the layout. I'm doing the story part here. I want credit for it. And Jimmy, it's immediately divorced from the grid uh, when, when he takes over. This is not six panel pages. Like... Like we like we just had, you know, you had your standard, you know, six six panel gimmicks, man, three tiers, square in half. Now we're getting wide all kinds of variation. And those skinny vertical panels, like really playing with compositional shape. With shapes. the second to second gimmicks, man. He's talking to Q who's giving him like you know the 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 Fidel Castro pen. How badass is this composition where like the ring that we're focused on and looking at in the foreground is mirrored by the by the talking head behind him? 
starting to get into that great shadow stuff that he does too that fits a spy story perfectly. But still a Marvel comic, man. So he's going to take a look at some old Fantastic Four to try to get that pose right. Amazing. Amazing underlighting. Amazing panel break where we're getting S.H.I.E.L.D. logo on one side and Hydra on the other side. Merged together with that like lightning bolt gutter in between. Wow. Just some just smart design, man. Yeah, just page four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is this is breathtaking. You can't draw this strip in a weekend, man. With all this stuff. And Storenko knows it. Eventually, I, I don't know if it's gonna be in here where we'll see it, but eventually his credits will read by you know who and shit like that. He won't even put his name. I've seen a couple of these where he just breaks your, your panel border a little tiny bit. And that was something that I would see in notes when I was trying to figure out how to make comics. And there were lots of warnings about that. Like you need to have a, a reason to do that. Otherwise it can be confusing. And it's cool. Every time he does it, it's, it's usually like some big moment, some, something striking out. It speaks to the wonky figure right here. Yes. Where it's like, what the fuck? I love seeing the wonky figure. No, I do too. I, I, I swear, like, if you look at those old comics, when I started reading old comics, I would get that, where it was like, this doesn't quite, this isn't, this doesn't make sense. I was trying to figure out how to draw figures, and it would be things that just didn't make sense, and now I realize, like, that is how you accentuate movement. Jimmy. It's, that's spectacular. That whole top row is spectacular. With white lettering. Yeah. This is, this is incredible. You, you did not see this. He's, he's being inventive for the medium of comics on almost every page here. I find this to be gorgeous. I love how some of it's behind the speed lines. Yeah. And then like the eyes and the hand are out in front. Yeah. With this technique, there were earlier images that looked like a young Harvey Kurtzman when That's he tried exactly to play it straight. And this is Harvey Kurtzman type storytelling. So I have to imagine that he's like looking at that stuff. He's probably looking at the best of comics. You know, he wrote yeah. those history books and all that. So he's, so he's uh, literate on the history of comics. A fan. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice to see that kind of uh, exposed here because I think about that a lot in my own practice. I like his his black and white balance here. Yes. I've kind of lucked into images that look like that and I'm always like, oh man, I do like this kind of thing where it's like the black and whites are almost even, right. but they create this really cool pattern. Jeez, and then when he wants to do the Kirby power, not a problem. It's a paste up. But yeah. it, it's a stat. Like, this image, wh where else does this appear? Because like, he's reusing something. <laughs> but it's all, I mean, when he goes dynamic is great. This is a pretty interesting piece what where it's, that? yeah. I don't know that we've seen that yet in these pages. Repeating your black and white treatment. Look at that hand, the skeleton hand. Tried it that earlier page. It's like, oh, yeah, this is ill. This is ill. I wonder, there's got to be something to this. Like, it's got to be in the stat process or something because that lettering it's it's cut right in half and there's no bleed mark or anything like that so once again bringing some kind of illustrative technique to comics uh you do see the paste up actually it makes sense yeah you could see the cutout right there his ability to just pull out and do like you know very simple panel but still dynamic focus on that ring upside down nick fury makes for a compelling panel this feels like a guy who is really in tune with what he's making. And there's your, again, Paul Galassi just like honing in on this stuff. Yeah, you, know? yeah. you can imagine a young Paul looking at, looking at these comics and just falling in love with comics. Track the lineage, man, because he's looking at Wally Wood. So it's Wally Wood's to right go Galassi. You've never seen these kind of panels in a Kirby Marvel comic. Yeah, what a dramatic piece that is. <laughs> I, he wrote those i bet you that's a great panel too that kind of cut away using screen tone for that beam so keeping the, like the kirby buildings and shit so he's he's staying true to to marvel but then he's flexing yeah picking and choosing no doubt about it this is a neat panel too for its simplicity that's something that i i think people are hesitant to do and you'd see miller do a ton of that whenever yeah. he gets on to daredevil i think it's very effective you know like i i know people in my generation were we're all hesitant to not draw scared, backgrounds scared in every of that panel. White, <laughs> scared of that white on the page man but it reads well like it, it really helps to have those panels that breeze by speaking of reed here's reed richards pretending to be uh <laughs> nick fury 
Yeah, more of that wonky figure work. Boom, boom, boom. Following that, that, that Kurtzman rhythm. Another paste-up gimmick. Where did that appear before? Using a circle template. Wow. I mean, uh, uh, the compass. And, and dude, this is so dope because you could see the different pens he's using for uh like in the ink compass and if you ever have you ever used the uh never. the compass for inking never it is such a bitch yes because <laughs> so i've never used it <laughs> because uh you need a line right so now you your pen has to absolutely have perfect flow you can't put an ounce of pressure it has to be the weight of the pen is sitting on that paper as you commit to making your circle and you have to be confident with the stroke yeah uh Good luck. Yeah, it makes me nervous just looking at it. It feels like this would be a Friday for me, just doing that <laughs> that circle effect. <laughs> His ability to change sizes within the pages, I think, is really astounding. So, for example, this panel feels huge. You know, it's almost a close-up, even though we're getting almost full figures. But then other places, you know, you, you have this much smaller scale. That's really effective and dynamic to me. I feel like he's getting some editorial direction here or something because we're now back to the Kirby panel sizes and I wonder if uh, Uncle Stan is like, you know, we do things uh, a certain way around here, true believer. Yeah, could be. He does adhere, though, to this idea of, like, keep that middle piece intact. Um, I've seen that again and again where that center is, like, very respected. There's some foreshortening. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It always, is, it just kills me. Like, it's every page is so exciting. Bringing some typography onto the page. Very fun. Combining more, you can see how this is hand-drawn, where the lines end, you know, as he gets near the border. So it's, it's not a screen that he's putting down there, but actually uh, hand-drawn. But a nice screen there. Yes. Just Button. something to give a little flair to that that pretty simple panel otherwise. He's creating very nice, balanced black and white pages. Yeah. It does look different at this size. There's your tall vertical panels. There's like three of them on a page. That's a pretty unique layout. And the six panel this way is not done often. Yeah, it's a mirror of that previous page just cut in half. Having some trouble with this, man. Yeah, I wonder what was going on there. It's, it's I mean, relatively it, simple, what we have. It ended up being even weird. Maybe so. in shadow, maybe that was a problem with the dark foreground. Or f dark background, and then you don't want to do it again on the foreground. Let's go Wally Wood, hardcore. Yeah, this is this is Steranko is just feeling it, right? Yeah. Con confident young cartoonist, giving the keys to the car, and uh, trying out every trick he comes up with. We've seen this, this kind of uh, thing for years on screen. I think that's a reflection. It's a cool face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never even thought about that. If he's uh, modeling and doing lighting and stuff for himself, that's pretty great screen use. Super that's graphic. A technique we haven't seen yet in this book. This is pretty good too. You know, like trying to indicate like how the light, how those goggles work, like yeah. some sort of visual effect that you want to show what he's seeing. Totally works. And how about that? That's some of your pop art kind of pattern. Yeah, we're going to be getting into the uh, illusion, uh, the optical illusion type artwork. Great explosion there. And, you, and you, you get that by having these broken black areas. You know, you feel there's a little shrapnel and debris flying past you there. It's very instructive for that. Yes. Because those are effects that seem like they're nothing until it's time for you to draw them. Yes, for sure. How do you communicate an explosion? Any of the abstract stuff. Good water. Seen a little bit of his water a couple of times. That's your Kirby tech, too, that background piece. Yeah, yeah, we're just going to throw that away. Like, we're just going to draw a, <laughs> a super ornate, crazy-looking island with a with this ridiculously cool-looking little spaceship. Love the cool ships. Look at how the pages are different size. See how this one is, like... You know, you see your cut corner, but it, it appears that it's cropped different than this. Well, like, you see, like, the, the words and stuff break this. So this is the printer, I think. Just cutting shit. I betcha, yeah. Because, like, on the previous stuff with the Jack Kirby stuff, you'd get half a little piece of sentence. So those guys are just slinging box cutters. 
So I love both of these pages. Yeah. Are remarkable. This is great. That feels like a photo reference where you're showing, you know, your your city layout, your your airport layout, that kind of thing. Pretty cool and effective. But that's your close up of like that. Now we've gone inside of that Kirby Tech Hydra base island thing, and it's just alien. It's that's awesome, man. Like, wow. For for, for a decade and a half, this is what fanzine artwork would look like, man. Where people are just throwing down the zips i think it's a consequence of like looking at this steranko stuff i bet you that's a it's incredible and having fury like part of that almost his his suit's almost camouflage yeah within this kind of super fantasy world oh dude we got that little gimmick again mm -hmm. veins in the uh in the eyeballs <laughs> With that, with a cityscape with actual like spatter it's like he he gave it this little bit of a treatment but then he went in more lights, so just a little flick. This reminds me a little bit of Seth has... Yes. Every now and then there's a couple of big pictures where Seth has like all these superhero characters. Yeah, I think that... Cooper Skeeber. 100 Best, uh, 100 best Comics Journal cover is sort of like this. It's, it's not you know superhero characters or Marvel characters, but it's all these characters. Kind of reminds me of that. Yeah. Very fun. This is the kind of stuff as a kid that I'd be excited to fool around with, try to do. Kind of wonder about, because it was so impossible as a kid to be like draw 20 characters really well. <laughs> Serenko told us a story when we were in Kansas City or wherever we were, man, that like uh, Marvel came to him to uh, draw Fantastic Four after Kirby. And uh, he was like, and I said, no, do you know why? Why? Why, Jim? Because it would have been suicide. <laughs> <laughs> man, he'd have killed it too. Like, I see this and it's like, yeah, apply that to Fantastic Four. Oh man, look at that cool, like gridded out. It's all graphic. That's so awesome, man. Yeah, it is. There's nothing to that, and it looks amazing. That's that's so dope. I Man, when he invented this, like he's like, i got to put that everywhere. Yeah, that's a popular motif. Here's your Galacy gimmicks. Totally. Totally. That's fun to see all the sweating. You don't see that on a lot of Marvel characters. I always associate sweat with like the alternative cartoonist <laughs> and anxiety. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Nick Fury had some of it. And now we're starting to get into when he gets bigger and bigger with these kind of spreads and splashes. I think this might be the first two-page spread. But but check this out, man. It has to be two uh, splash pages because they just didn't have full bleed capabilities at that point, maybe. You know, the, the weird thing is you do, though. Like, on the inside, you could have done sure. full bleed. But Kirby would do this into the 70s, like his DC stuff. If you look at those two-page spreads, they still don't bleed in the middle. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, could it... Yeah, I guess it could bleed because, like, I, I wasn't thinking that this would be a center spread, but it, it would be signatures and have to be folded and stuff. Like, you could still touch. Yeah, the stuff in the center definitely because you're printing around on whatever right. the other side of it is. Right. Perhaps they were just hedging their bets. This is cool, man. Doubling up the zips creates a little more ray, but that's okay, man, because we have a we have a confusing scene happening here. Going ornate with the Kirby tech. And Steranko full on now writing and illustrating. Yeah, there's a lot happening in that in that splash. And this would be cribbed uh, much later in the G.I. Joe comics whenever they, they put snake eyes up on that little machine and try to dig into his mind. I'm going to note the hair texture. It's, it's a relatively simple line in a place where, you know, there's heavy shading and it's more the... I don't know, masculine kind of superhero stuff. But you note that that light hair treatment and then like his his one of his last Marvel stories is a romance comic. Yeah. So again, a guy who's into comics and comics history, uh pulling from a lot of sources. This is another example of that scale. Like look how big that thing is on the page. Yeah. Yeah. And he ain't photoshopping these little figures, man. He has to draw them things. Giant figure in the foreground. That ability to do scale is something that I, I compliment cartoonists on. And it stands out whenever somebody's good at it. Kirby created the uh, shield helicarrier in this angle. Everybody just <laughs> draws that exact one. I've, I've done the same like in, in, uh, in my X-Men comic. He, it's like he drew it once and everybody cribs it from that exact angle and everything. That's one of those really awkward figures. I, I like it. Like I say, I think that's how you get this movement. Love this device too. Whatever that contraption is on her head all the wires coming out it's really fun a little bit more of that sweat for you yeah that's super wally wood to me this reminds me of like canon yeah sure 
Nice big middle panel shot. Look at these hands. <laughs> Look at these things, man. This is fun with the super that you know like that's a form of foreshortening you're not seeing the short limb but you're seeing like his head's way farther back than that hand and even that chest more of these wild figures there's a little lou fine in this figure that makes sense with these proportions and stuff lou fine a guy like generations talked about him i'm sure Steranko was was into him a nine panel grid baby that's fun to see little fight sequence you know what's great we we looked at wolverine jungle adventure recently and we and we looked at kind of the fight scene was treated like this where the distance from the viewer was the same for a couple of pages of panels it's exactly the same thing here yeah that's really fun to see a fight scene like that a focus on the choreography of the actual fight there you go <laughs> from the table of con ta the title page of this book um, is, is where you see this image. How did this look in print? It's wild. How did this look in print? You know, and that's where you start to see him referencing drawers outside of comics. Yeah. That's that's why I really need, I could stare at this for a long time. I know. I, I really need to see what that look because it's like it's not black and white line at a time when that was the requirement. <clears throat> so this had to look funky as hell. Yeah, it's like ink. Wa wet ink washes even behind it you know where that yeah wet where the wet. ink's just like sp splaying out that's a balls move it is and i don't know that we see him do it again so that may not have worked well <laughs> but it's awesome to see it now in the artist edition form you pointed out earlier where it looks like he pulled back a little like stan must have said hey jim <laughs> this is this is a beyond the marvel style I feel like at this point, maybe the fans were writing in, maybe the book was selling, whatever, whatever you need to be able to like go keep doing your thing, Jim. Right. Yeah. It happened. Everybody kayfabe's back muscles look like mashed potatoes under there. More of that wild foreshortening kind of stuff. Strong silhouette. Just even that graphic thing of mm -hmm. having the little monocle. Um, show up in negative space see it's it's Kirby and Lou Fine with these it's like Kirby outer shape but the inner part is the musculature that Lou Fine would do it's such a specific kind of uh, masculine you know the, the topless Nick Fury but with like the super tight pants the leather boots <laughs> yeah that's the that's the uh what's that say uh, Tom Tom Jones like that's that's his motif man a little zip -a tone shadow and you you get that when yeah like they're still not putting the the colorist and stuff like you get that when you can't trust a colorist to do what you want and he will color his stuff <laughs> eventually and be able to make those decisions without you know using black this is really nice movement with the hands having that hand in the foreground at the beginning of the swing yeah just throwing haymakers at the dude's jibs man. that's what it feels like big punches there yeah that's interesting the uh how much is done in the black and white here like with the screen tones that takes away from what the colorist needs to do mm -hmm. compared to like where comics are today where it's like you know, what does this look like today if you're drawing Nick Fury in terms of what does the line art need to do versus we're going to hand this off to the colorist now? Get out of the way. These are pretty fun. Very simple, but works as your icon, like an iconic panel, the face offs. <laughs> I, I love it back in, in the mask. I love back in the day, like on in, in pop culture, like. This was a thing, man. Like these, like perfect, you know, face replicas, and it's like we saw what special effects look like back then, man. If you freaking dummies are yeah. fooled by that, man, maybe you shouldn't be allowed to carry a gun. Even it is funny what the uh, what the high tech stuff is back then. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good with no holding lines. Yes, for for the edges of him. And a great, that silhouette of the back leg that's that's going back, receding. Using the white zips on that, man, Super to, awesome. to break up the black. I'll tell you, man, this is like Man from Uncle, mm -hmm. Mission Impossible. It was in the wild then. 
I really like her hair. All the all the images of, of that blonde hair. It definitely conveys that it's something different. Right. Ah, uh, this is great, dude. Because this is a stat of a previous uh, splash that we saw. But let's uh, gimmick it up a little bit. It's good. It's good. Boy, that's lively water. There's a lot happening in that water. Yeah, for sure. Using Kirby, Jack Davis, and Wally Wood. Jim, let's go to the 42nd Street. What an iconic page. What a bummer it's not. Like, we don't get the original art on this, one of those most of, of the iconic pages, but who knows? Like, it could have been photostats pasted on photostats. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. It does look good in wow. black and white, though. There you go. I mean, that's probably the sample of what you would have had. Totally. That's wild. Look at the the way that stuff's all like the coloring has all distorted. Yeah, yeah. So so it's not like uh, this is Bristol board. Like th these are copies as well. So it's the same paper front and back. That's so weird. It's so weird where the lettering sticks out. Like, is this the the only piece of the original page? Is is like a little window cut in that <laughs> word balloon? How bizarre. That's cool. This is like pre manga, you know, like these cartoony figures with these realistic backgrounds. Look at how strange that is as a drawing. Yeah. It almost doesn't even make sense in this comic. That's a neat use for like a flashback. Here we got our optical illusion stuff. Yeah. Got our cityscape back there. This feels like that homage to the, the pop art. Like totally. The pop art painting. Totally. He's being part of the zeitgeist. Maybe even seeing it in museums at the time. Do a shade. That's sick. The thing, because this is a scan, like we don't get to see the lines underneath. Yeah, I was hoping that this is another one of those that would be great to see for that reason. Yeah. Uh, see what that color looks like now, <laughs> right. you know, 50 years later. Yeah, probably good that they have a stat of it hopefully we'll catch some somewhere there's a little bit of white media on on a black ink wow that's one of those details that surprises me because it's so small it's so small and it's it's going to be white on newsprint with right. the black printed all around it that's a pretty fun grid 12 panel grid yeah it is good captain america <laughs> This is as much as Nick Fury can emote. <laughs> and I don't know what that's uh, communicating right there. Yeah, that's Golgo 13 kind of expressions. <laughs> Maybe he's chomping on the cyanide pill, like scooping it out of his uh, tooth cap. Wow, that's fun. He liked the results of his previous uh, little stat gimmicks, man. This so is add awesome. Some more. So, like, that's ink, ink wash. wash. With the, your photocopied elements, with your uh, mechanical lettering, great stuff. I would bet that he did that. Yeah, I bet that you. That paste up piece. But I, I love the this kind of uh, you know script handwriting. Yeah. Yeah. And I then mean, on there's... top of like the dialogue lettering, I love this page. Yeah, yeah. There's lots of there's this is different typography. Even there. having the indicia like pasted down, it's such an example of all these different different visual styles coming together scotch tape yeah <laughs> drawn on that tape too another one of those duo shades that we're not getting the original of that's too bad that's a complete drawing in the duo shade yeah look at this man al williamson owned that page yeah look at his writing so great right like the, the hand the steranko handwriting it's so it's so perfect. Yeah. A little bit of flare. It is that, uh, that Toth flare pen. Look at this, man. Some smoker owned this. Whoever Dave is. Dave Fellatio, I believe, is the name. <laughs> I wonder if guys got this at, like, that early comic convention in New York. Fifteen bucks! Oh, don't say that. <laughs> Storenko it strikes me as a guy who would uh, know the value of his work, man. We 
get a lot of stats. Yeah, that's that's curious to me because I don't see, uh, you know, like weird things that the originals wouldn't hold up. So. Right. It's just for some it's just, reason or other got rid of them. He probably statted everything, and like you know, these are lost to the ages. Can't find the guy who has it. You know, this these are old enough that you know the guy who owned this died, and his his kids just threw out all of his junk or something. Yeah, you're probably right. How about that blow up? It's a very dramatic piece, and and elements of Kirby. Yeah, you know, like that hand. That feels like some of the manga that we've seen techniques where it's like part of its reproduction of something, but then also drawings on top. Mm -hmm. Here, we're gonna get a little duotone with some drawing. That's good, and a little Fantastic Four. Yeah, that's quite a page. Another one of those uh, super lighting. Wally Wood on one side and Paul Glacy on the other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Totally, man. That's that's cool. Yeah, I like seeing the white out there, the choice. It starts out as a panel and realizes it's better as an open panel. Yeah. Would, again here. I would love to talk to him about that because I wonder if this is like chilling effect. Like you you do the panel. And then you go to Stan or whoever, like, can I take this off? It'll be graphically better. But you don't do it ahead of time because then you got to build it back in and it's it's time out of your day. I always like this motif of, like, the shadow yes. clues you into what the texture is. Yeah, you I'm could, a fan of that. You could do some real fun designy stuff like that. How wow. about that for a splash, baby? That's incredible. It's a great splash because you rarely see uh, Captain America with a with a jammy. Yeah, it's such a believable like power pose for Captain America too. Looks like he's like planted himself for this weapon. <laughs> fists just flying everywhere too. <laughs> uh, it feels like if you counted all the fists, it wouldn't quite add up, there's, right? There's, there's one or two too many because <laughs> then you got these guys yes. <laughs> and this one. Hilarious. This is a neat composition. It's essentially a two-page spread, but it's almost like there are panels, you know, within right, yeah. the two-page splash. Yeah, totally. That's a real interesting way to break up space. Like, look, you know, I mean, it's totally different, this side of these figures, than this side. Right. In outer space. That's wonderful. What a way to make two, a two-page splash exciting. Oh, I always, I have this issue. I love seeing that little invisible car. That's some intricate drawing for Duo Shade. It really is, man. I, I would I would bet that, uh, you know, he drew it on paper and like light boxed it and went over it uh, with it with the Duo Tone. I hope so. How on earth could you like figure this out? Interacting with Captain America, interacting with it? Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, I love this issue. That's a spectacular page. Now, this is a Frank Giacquia inking, but did Frank Giacquia ink this? I don't know about that. Smaller paper. Here we go. That's that's where your transition is. But still chock full of stuff. It's smaller than the 11 by 17 image area. That always confused me. Yeah. I think the first Street Angel I did, I was drawing a live 11 by 17, so the pages would be like 12 by 19 or uh, something like that, you know, 13 by 19, and it's so awkward. <laughs> it's cool to see the transition to the smaller pages. Yeah. Because you hear, you know, you used to hear like Kirby stories whenever they transitioned to these smaller pages, and it, it does feel different. Mm -hmm. The scale is just so different in terms of these figures don't have that, like, superpower uh, in terms of their size and scale. You know, it's still obviously Steranko and what he does, but it's just a different, I don't know, man. It's like thinking different or something. Right. You know? it, it would be a huge adjustment to, to do that. 
like I've worked on different size pages, but I didn't do it where it's like page a day for years right. where you're really locked into a certain thing. Let's just marvel at that little octopus. <laughs> all right, man. We're going to round things out with uh, some covers. You know, these are all going to be knockouts. I think this was like his tryout pages, right? Is that what the deal is with these? You know, I don't know. I, does it say? Kirby Pencil 2 pages were described in favor. In preparation for the new Nick Fury strip, Stranko was given two pages to audition his inking technique. Oh boy, you don't. You want to ink your stuff? Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, wow. So <laughs> look at this ridiculous shoot around the corner. So it's it's like Kirby pencil Pencils. layouts and yeah. then what Stranko would look like on top. Right. That's pretty nice. I like that kind of inking for a uh, background texture. Yeah, it's cool. I don't think that made it to any of the pages we saw, but. He's doing it a couple times here, and it's, it's that's a neat graphic approach. And this is him showing off. Now getting into the covers. Wow. Wild. A lot of lines, man. This is a young young, uh, young Jim Steranko. Doesn't want too much weight on that page. Super dynamic, like, you know, all those lines and also all the guns pointing. Just a lot of directional devices. <laughs> Nick Fury fighting is so much fun. <laughs> because it is it's it's the um judo that mm -hmm. was done like in the Manchurian candidate or something. Like Karate. very stiff. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's a good effect on that hand. That's a good villain too, like a giant, you know, twice the size of the regular figures. Oh man, we're gonna do a couple a couple tries. This would this always would confuse me where You'd see like the redraw, and it's kind of like I don't know what is that really wrong? Like that hand sucks a dick. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I wonder who did the redraw. Do you think that's Romita? Oh, you know what? Yeah, probably. Like th these are homeworks of Romita. These like very sharp, thick uh, lines. And he did a great run of uh, of uh, Captain America early on, back when it was like Leroy Lettered and stuff. That's wild, with your collage items. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, and using like a grease pencil for the in-between parts. Just a lot happening there. The figures on top of the photos. It's like two different kinds of paper for these pieces. <laughs> guns. <laughs> Shield gallery of guns. And then we got a couple articles of kayfabe from uh, the man himself. So cool, though. You know, like I wish that every I, I wish every artist edition had some of these pages and notes by the artist. It's it's a nice touch, you know. Like for for we look at all these artist editions and think of what works and doesn't. To me, that's a really good touch, and I'm surprised there's not more of that. Yes, maybe interviews with the creators, something to get that kind of like give us some some inside scoop on this stuff. What does this mean to you? Looking at it, you know, all these years later in this kind of an edition, it feels like every artist edition should have some of that. Yeah, I agree, Jimmy. Going through these things, man, all it does is juice me up to get to the drawing board, man. So I'm about to get out of here. How are you feeling? Wrap it up. All right. Kayfabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Join me on Patreon at patreon.com slash jimrug. Downloads of my out-of-print zines and mini-comics, behind-the-scenes, original art comparisons. Everything that you uh, come to enjoy from, from my process stuff, you can find lots of at patreon.com slash jimrug. Red Room Issue 1 and 2 are available for pre-order right this second. Thousands of people have reserved their copies, and you could do so today. Hit the link tree in the description below this video. It'll take you to the Fantagraphics website so that you could do it. But your store can order the Red Room comics also. If you want to read those comics ahead of time, patreon.com slash edpiscor. You're going to be able to read uh, the entire archive for $3. And the first two issues are up there. Uh, put new pages up every Tuesday. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything we have coming up in 2021. You can find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Jimmy, give him one more set of marching orders, man, so that we could get on our way, make our own comics. <laughs> Read more comics.